It's six o'clock. At this time, I'll call the Perry City Council meeting for April the 7th, 2020 to order. At this time, I'd like to make an official roll call of who is on the phone with us today. Ms. Bynum Grace? Here. Mayor Pro Tem King? Perry City Council meeting for April the 7th, 2020 to order. At this time, Hold on, folks. We got a little feedback. feedback. I'm sorry. Yeah, everybody, please mute your phones. Okay. Mayor Pro Tem King. Council Member Peterson. Here. 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 Thank you. Council Member Jones? Here. Thank you. Member Hunt. Council Member Hunt's here. Council Member Albritton? Here. City Attorney Miss Newby? Yes, sir. Here. And Assistant City Manager Robert Smith? Here. Thank you. At this time, I would ask that you stand with me, please, and I would ask Council Member Jones to lead us in the invocation, and that I would also ask Mr. Hunt to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, let us pray. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, uh, we, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for the city of Perry. And Lord, we ask now that uh, you be with our nation, uh, Lord, you be with our state, you be with our city. Uh, and Lord, we ask that you would use this time to, uh, uh, God, just uh, help us lead, guide, and direct the city in a, in, a, in a way that glorifies you, in a way that we never even had before. And please be with all of those on the front lines of this fight and keep them safe and, and protect them uh, and bring a swift end to uh, this coronavirus plague. Lord, we thank you, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Of America. Richard Sands, one nation, under God, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. If I can remind everybody to please mute your phones at this point in time until we have a roll call. Thank you very much. Item, item four on our agenda this evening is a public hearing. The purpose of this public hearing is to provide any interested party with an opportunity to express their views and concerns in accordance with OCGA 36-66-4. This public meeting is now open. 4A is a SUSC 26-6. 2020, the applicant is Rob Ballard, a request for a special exception to construct 10 six-unit buildings on 2.24-acre parcel, which is phase three, and 25 four-unit buildings on phase two property. The property is located at Club Villa Court. The tax map number is 0P04901818E00. Mr. Wood? Mayor, 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 Council. This request, as the mayor stated, is uh, for the construction of multifamily units. Uh, really, what we're looking for, we're looking at here, is a density issue. Uh, the subject property, the 2.24 acre parcel, which we identified in the uh, document together here, for tax, um, is proposed, uh, is listed as phase three. And that is proposed to uh, for development of 60 um, units. Uh, those will be one bedroom units. There are 10 buildings that are that will be proposed there. So each building will have six units. 
They will also ultimately be on individual lots, so they meet the definition of not requiring a special assessment for that particular aspect. However, uh, the 60 units on that 2.24 acre parcel uh, does exceed the uh, maximum density that is allowed on that particular parcel. Um, it is typically allowed 48 to the so there's a 12 unit gap there. However, the owner of this property, the developer of this property, has also purchased uh, the larger parcel um, uh, that is uh, listed as phase two of the Club Villa apartment. On this particular parcel, which uh, there was approved back in the mid-2000, um, uh, proposal for 100 uh, four-unit buildings, each of those uh, units will have two and three bedroom units. Um, again, all of those uh, buildings will have no more than four units and four dwelling units uh, for a total of 100 units. In looking at the maximum density allowed uh, on that particular parcel, uh, that would be 191 units allowed. So there, as in this case, we're proposing 100. So they're under the maximum allowed density for phase two, the larger parcel, and over the maximum density allowed for phase three, the smaller parcel. So that's part of the reason that was that the special assessment that the applicant is asking that we consider both parcels as one. And therefore, they're still under the maximum allowed density for that uh, property. Point out also that um, the uh, state two parcel does have some areas of common open space that would be divided in that location. Uh, the applicant is also requesting a modification to the parking requirement. The, um, under the ordinance for multifamily, uh, we require a minimum of one and a half parking space to put in. In the only larger parcel, which is phase two, where you have or will have two and three bedroom units, the applicant is proposing to provide two parking space per unit. On the smaller part where we will have one bedroom units, the applicant is proposing uh, parking less than the uh, minimum. Um, on that parcel, um, there will be, excuse me, there will be 80 parking spaces for those 60 one bedroom units. And there will be, um, 200. 200 parking spaces for the, uh, the 100 units on the larger parcel. Therefore, they are actually providing more uh, parking than is required overall. Um, we pointed out that typically with one bedroom apartments, while there may be uh, some units that have multiple cars, typically um, in a one bedroom development like that, uh, you're gonna have less, car less cars uh, for the residents and therefore we believe that the 80 parking spaces would be reasonable to consider on that particular site. Um, finally, uh, the last aspect that the applicant is requesting is for a modification to the lot width. Um, in the ordinance for multifamily developments, a minimum lot width is 85 feet. Under the phase one uh, of, of Club Villa that uh, was developed earlier in the, in the uh, mid to late 2000s, and uh, the approved plan for uh, the second phase, those lots, and I'm not sure how they were, uh, how they got approved, but they are 75 feet in width. Um, on the um, smaller parcel, the phase three parcel, um, lot widths will be a minimum of 60 feet. Um, I do want to point out, however, that um, in the area, uh, this 2.24 uh, two, uh, two acre parcel 
um, backs up to the Catholic Church. And the Catholic Church had approached the city several months ago about the possibility of expanding or adding a new sanctuary and asked us about traffic issues and, and obtaining another curb cut. Um, we told them that uh, Highway 127 is a DOT road, that they would need to talk to them. I believe they have, and DOT said they would allow one, but it, an additional curb cut, I should say. However, that would have to be a, a right in, right out only. We suggested to the church that this 2.24 acre parcel was for sale, we knew that, um, and I think they may have done some, some um, discussions looking at that, but apparently uh, the, the applicant for this application already had it under um, contract. We asked this applicant to, go, to talk to the church and see if there was a way that he may be able to provide them with access from their property to um, Chevron Drive, uh, which would provide two actual two means of access on the 127 uh, to the north and the five-lane section of 127 across from Houston Lake. Um, he was able to uh, work out a, a plan where he does provide a 24-foot driveway uh, that the church will build, uh, providing that access. Um, so that's part of the reason why the lot widths are, are, are less than normal. So in uh, summary, uh, the applicant is asking for um, a total of 160 units on the two parcels, uh, whereas 239 would be allowed, would be uh, the maximum allowed. He's also asking for 200 and uh, 280 parking spaces uh, where um, sorry uh, where they're so they're looking at a, at a uh, so 280 spaces versus uh, 300 and um, 330 which would be um, the the maximum that we would allow, or maximum required. And finally, the reduction in the lot width from 85 feet to um, 60 feet for phase three. And the 75 foot lot widths already exist, or already approved um, for phase two. I will point out that um, in reviewing the criteria, uh, this application did, uh, in our view, meet those requirements. Uh, the property is um, surrounded um, on, all, on uh, three sides, well, excuse me, on all four sides by a property that is zoned C2, general commercial. Um, most of those properties are developed as commercial or as institutional uses, so the higher density uh, that is proposed on this 2.24 acre parcel is completely surrounded by commercial zone property and buffered from any single family residential areas. Um, the so planning the commission, will, will, will. The, the higher density that's proposed on the on this smaller parcel, the 2.24 acre parcel, is completely surrounded by commercial yep. zoning and is buffered uh, by that property, by those commercial properties from any single family residential uh, properties. Both the staff and the Planning Commission recommend approval of this request with four conditions. Those conditions are that phase two shall not exceed 100 two and three bedroom dwelling units. At least 200 parking spaces shall be provided on the phase two parcels. That phase three shall not exceed 61 bedroom dwelling units and at least 80 parking spaces shall be provided on the phase three parcels. Excuse me, there were five. And the fifth, um, that the development of the project shall substantially comply with the layout previously approved for phase two and the layout presented with this application for phase three, which is identified as preliminary plat prepared by Saunders Engineering Consultants Incorporated 
and dated February uh, 2020. And I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have of me. I know that the applicant is here, he's in the lobby, and if there are any questions, he can be made available. Council members, do you have any questions relative to this special exception? Yes, sir. Uh, Mayor? Yes. Um, probably my questions are related to the fact that my ability to hear everything Brian said was, uh, you know, less than great. But um, I wanted to ask in the, um, if you could go back to the screen, um, Capitus, to go back to the screen, uh, I wanted Brian to show the um, where the driveway is from the um, Catholic Church there uh, into the property. Also, I was unclear, that's one question. Also, I was unclear about the number of parking spaces per one bedroom unit. And then my third question was, I I'm assuming that along the front of the units that are already in place, that that is Chevron Drive. Am I correct about that? Yes, so... No, that's Club okay. Bell Drive. Why don't, Ryan, oh, why don't you walk up here okay. closer and talk into yes, the... Yes, please, oh. Ryan. Oh, into that? Uh, because that one, I'm wondering about the streets that come down the, um, the picture Ryan. there that have cold the fact well, already built into the end. Right. I'm yes, just right. wondering why he's not utilizing that. Okay, so the uh, Chevron Drive is this is this road leading into the existing units. This is the phase two property that we were referring to. This is Chevron Drive, Chevron Road, excuse me, which connects Club Villa Court. Did I say Chevron down here? Yeah. This is Club Villa Court, excuse me, that uh, leads uh, from uh, the five lane section of, of um, House and Lake Road or Highway 127 right out here. Brian, just a moment. Can, can you guys hear Brian? Or do I need to move him closer yeah. to, to the phone? Yes, I can hear him. Okay. I can I just, hear him. I just want to make sure you, you can hear what he's saying. Okay. Yes. So this yes, is... Brian, tell me House and Lake. So House and Lake Road is out here. Um, this is the right in around this area is where the VA, hospital, uh, VA center is. Um, and then you move up. This is the um, Shell Station up at the corner where Highway 127 turns to go towards uh, Matt Arthur School. Okay. So Chevron Road connects Club Villa Court to the two-lane section of Highway 127. This is the Catholic Church, and this is the parcel where the higher density is proposed, and the, uh, the driveway to the church will be located at the top of that parcel here. Okay. There was a question okay. about the, where the cul-de-sacs are. My understanding is that's going to be phase two, is it not? That's correct. So the um, you, you can kind of see on the aerial that these cul-de-sacs exist. Uh, they were never they were put in. I guess they were graded, and um, uh, I believe they have um, curb and gutter, but they were never paved. So those will ex will be paved, um, and the lots for the phase two will come off of those cul-de-sacs. Was there another question? Okay, thank you. Council Member Peterson, do you have any other questions relative? Does, does that explain so, it to Yes, sir, but except for the uh, one bedroom parking spaces, yes. I'd like to make it. Yes, so the ordinance does not address parking based on number of bedrooms. It just says, uh, it just requires a blanket, one and a half parking spaces per unit. Um, so in that case, for 60 units, um, there would be a requirement for 90 parking spaces on phase three. Um, they are proposing 80 parking spaces. So 10 parking spaces short on this parcel, but they will be, um, 
have more parking spaces than required on the phase three, on the phase two section. Uh, two parking spaces per unit for those two and three bedroom units. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How should we justify not making them have one ahead? head? That's our ordinance. So if we're considering both parcels as one development, they exceed the number of parking spaces required. Okay, but the folks up here don't get but one and a half, and they have company, and they got to walk all the way over here to this last cul-de-sac to park their car. Mm -hmm. If they're, they're, so again, um, most people in a one-bedroom apartment are a lot more likely to have only one vehicle. Granted, there may be some that have multiple, uh, but that is, uh, so there should still be some additional parking uh, available um, at that site. And y'all approve that? We recommend approval of that, yes, sir. What you gonna do next time you come for them? No, that request. You say you, you did it for these people. Why we will know? evaluate each application on their merit, on its individual merits. What other questions do you have? Hearing none, is there anyone here who would like to speak in favor of this development? I think he's okay to accept that, that it's been approved by the council, I mean by the planning and zoning, and so I think he, he's welcome to come in and address us if he'd like. Lee, what's your feeling on that? Well, I think that the planning commission makes a good compromise uh, the primary thing I think to point out is the phase three is surrounded by commercial and also will have the drive going over to the church when the church has its expansion. So going back to Councilmember Hunt's question, should you have some issues relative to parking on a Saturday night, for example, in the phase three, they'll be able to use the church parking lot or some of that other surrounding commercial prop. Everybody with me on there? The, the trade-off yes. is the reduction of the density in the phase two. And that's much more important as far as uh, staff and planning commission is concerned because all that traffic all has to go out on Club Villa. Everybody see where I am there? And so therefore, if you can get any reduction in density that the developer agrees to, that's a benefit for the traffic coming on Club Villa. Uh, generally, for most of the apartment complexes, like Brian says, you usually don't have a problem with one bedroom on having two or three extra cars. One space is usually fine. Okay. Mr. Ballard has joined us. Would you like to speak in favor of this project? Sure. Mr. Ballard? Yes, Mayor. I appreciate the opportunity. And again, I had told Brian I want to be considered of this situation and just kind of stay clear. But of course, we are excited about the project. We put a great deal of time and effort into it. We have a reputation for doing first-class development. And uh, that's what we want to do here. We see this as being uh, what we consider to be the keystone piece of the project is up front. And uh, we do have great access, a great location. We work very diligently in bringing the standards up of that apartment development. It kind of slipped through the years. So we've got a a lot of work out there to bring it up to speed and uh, we are just happy to you know to be involved and hopefully you guys will will go along with the plan and uh, we'll be able to get started out there but we want to be you know um, smart growth kind of you know um, respectful and uh, just top tier development company here and there we're excited about it appreciate you guys having us Council members, do you have any questions? No, sir. Mr. Hunt? What about water drainage? So the... Um, the question is about drainage, council yes. members. So the development uh, 
for phase two, actually for phase one and phase two, already has um, a stormwater uh, design uh, down at the down in the lower part of the property. It actually runs across a couple of properties, and then the city owns the uh, the major portion of that stormwater pond. Uh, we will need to do the evaluation uh, for. Uh, through the uh, site plan uh, project, uh, site plan review process for phase three. We haven't gotten to that point, uh, but I would suspect that they will either have to maintain it on site or find a way to include it in this uh, regional facility and make sure that that um, meets the requirements for development on that site. I'm sure you all thought about that. What, so what do you propose that the drainage go on phase three? So that whole area out there was master planned years ago when they did the VA clinic, the self storage, the um, Circle K, draft, you know, grocery, all that was self, was all master planned. There's a master detention pond just south of the, of the storage building. It's a big master detention pond that was in plan for that entire area. So, so you're saying this uh, detention pond that's in this location yes. was designed to accommodate all yes. of these uh, properties? Yes, sir. Originally. Okay. But being the steward you are, you're going to check and be sure. We will verify that, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Mr. Ballard? No, sir. Thank you very much, Mayor, for allowing me to come in and say hello. Thank you for for putting up with what we're having to go through right now. <laughs> no I truly apologize. No, I no, no, don't apologize. I understand. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Is there anybody here that would want to speak in opposition of this project? Hearing none. At this time, this public hearing is now closed. Council member item five on our agenda is review of the minutes. 5A is you've been provided with the minutes for the March 12, 2020 special recall meeting, the March 17th, 2020 council meeting, and the March 20th, 2020 special call meeting. At this time, I will entertain a motion to approve the minutes as presented. So moved. Moved by Mr. Hunt. Second. There's a second. Is there any additions, deletions, or corrections that need to be made to these minutes at this time? Hearing none, we will have a roll call vote. All in favor, of Mr. Hunt? Aye. Yes. Miss Bynum Grace? Miss Bynum Grace? She may need to unmute. Huh? She may need to unmute herself. Unmute your phone, Miss Grace. Council member, I'm sorry, you're in favor of that? Yes. Okay, thank you. Miss Peterson? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Albritton? Yes. Thank you very much. Please let the record show the minutes were approved unanimously. Item six is old business. Six A is old business for the mayor. I have none. Six B is old business from the council members. Are there any council member on the call that has any old business? No, sir. Thank you. Six no. C, I'm sorry? No, sir. Okay. No. Okay. Six C is the city attorney, Ms. Newby. No, sir. 6D is the city manager, Mr. Gilmore. None. And 6E is assistant city manager, Mr. Smith. No, sir, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Item seven is new business. 7A is a special exception application. You've heard a great deal about that from Mr. Wood already. Are there any additional questions you would like answered before we take a vote on this special exception? Hearing none, at this time I will entertain a motion to accept the special or approve the special exception as presented by the Planning and Zoning Commission to approve. Including the five. So moved. This would, hold on just a second before you make your motion. 
uh, Mr. Wood indicated that this is approval subject to the five items he had outlined uh, in his presentation. Okay, given that, now is there is there a motion to approve? So moved. Ms. Bynum Grace has made a motion. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Jones made a second. Roll call on approval. Mr. Hunt? Approve. Approve. Ms. Bynum Grace? Approve. Oh, thank you. Ms. Peterson? Approved with Mr. Wood's um, stipulation. Thank you. Councilmember Jones? Approved with stipulations. Thank you. Council Member Albritton. Approved. Uh, did Reverend King join us? Thank you. Let the record show that the special exception was approved unanimously with the five conditions outlined by the Planning and Zoning Commission. Thank you. Item 7B is resolutions for introduction and adoption. 7B1 is a resolution authorizing the mayor and the clerk to execute a supplemental lease and project funding agreement to provide financing for the purchase of a solid waste vehicle. Mr. Gilmore. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, council members, you have in your board pack an agreement with the Georgia Municipal Association to fund the solid waste vehicle knuckle bone truck. You may remember you awarded the bid on that, I think at your last meeting. This is our standard process for financing and we recommend to you to approve. Council members, what questions do you have relative to this authorization? This is the vehicle that we uh, voted to approve even though we're not buying anything at this point. Or just some clarification on that, please. Yes, you approved the knuckle broom truck before we impose the uh, stoppage. Now, this is a budget item that we approved before we put everything on hold and it's a uh, necessary purchase. This is just the financing of it through uh, GMA. Okay. What other questions do you have? Here, Does that mean we're going to go ahead and purchase it? Yes. Or? This, this one was one that we've already, the process has already gone forward. We're just financing it now on our normal rotating finance program. But we had it on hold, but we're going to keep it on hold? No, no. Not, not this one. This is not the truck that's on hold? No. Okay. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to approve the authorization moving forward with the financing of this vehicle through our GMA financing program. So moved. Second. A move by Mr. Albritton and a second by Ms. Peterson. Roll call vote on that. Mr. Hunt? Yes, sir. Mr. Hunt says yes. Ms. Bynum Grace? Yes. Ms. Bynum Grace says yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Ms. Peterson says yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Jones says yes. Mr. Albritton? Yes. Thank you. Please let the record show that the resolution to authorize financing the waste, waste, waste solid waste vehicle was approved unanimously. Item 7B2 is a resolution authorizing the mayor and the clerk to execute a supplemental lease and project funding agreement to provide financing for the purchase of various vehicles. Mr. Gilmore. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this also is to uh, pay the lease to pay for vehicles you already have approved. Uh, there's a mower, the animal control vehicle, the forklift, some pickup trucks for water and sewer and a mower. Uh, these have previously been approved by you and we are recommending that you approve this supplemental lease agreement with GMA to fund. What questions do you have? Now these are pieces of equipment that we have approved and the purchase was submitted prior to 
our pr previous one where we put a large number of items on hold, these are not included on that on hold purchase. These are things that we have approved several months back. And this is just the financing on those that we normally do through the GMA direct leasing program. Any questions for Mr. Gilmore? Hearing none, at this time, I will entertain a motion to authorize the mayor and the clerk to execute a supplemental lease and project funding agreement with GMA on these various purchases. So moved. There's a move by, mo motion by Mrs. Bynum Grace and a second by Mr. Jones. A roll call vote, please. Mr. Hunt? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Ms. Bynum Grace says. Yes. Ms. Bynum Grace says yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Ms. Peterson is yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Jones is yes. Mr. Hunt was yes. Uh, Councilmember Albritton? Yes. Mr. Albritton? Mr. Hunt, you did say yes, did you not? Thank you. I thought you did. Please let the record show that the resolution was approved unanimously. Item 7C is the appointment of Mr. Dan Bass as interim Chief Building Official, Mr. Gilmore. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, council members, I think you are aware that Mr. Hester, our former Chief Building Official, resigned to take another uh, uh, position elsewhere. Uh, as an interim basis, based on the recommendation from Mr. Wood, which I concur with, we would like you to have no objections to appointing Mr. Bass as an interim Chief Building Official. Uh, this particularly needs to be done because there's a number of documents that have to be signed off by the chief building official and we recommend that we go with Mr. Bass at this time. Council members, what questions would you have rel relative to this appointment? What experience does Mr. Bass have? Is he currently with us, I assume? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Bass is the most experienced building inspector that the city has. He has been with the city at least 20 years. And as I understand it, this is just an interim until such a time as we decide to fill that job somewhere in the future. Correct. Council members, any questions relative to this recommendation? Hearing none at this time, I'll entertain a motion to appoint Mr. Dan Bass as the interim chief building official. So moved. Mr. Hunt has made a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. Second by Ms. Peterson. Roll call on this, please. Ms. Bynum Grace? Yes. Ms. Bynum Grace is yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Ms. Peterson is yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Jones is yes. Mr. Hunt? Yes. Yes. Mr. Albritton? Yes. Um, thank you. Let the record show that this appointment was approved unanimously by the council. Item 8 is other business and supplemental agenda. 8A is a request to add a moratorium in the city of Perry relative to murals. Mr. Gilmore. Thank you, Mayor. Council members, we would like to have your consideration to pass a resolution imposing a moratorium on the issuing of any permits for murals in the city for a time of 120 days. Uh, we hope to have this done sooner. Uh, the reason we're requesting this is in your board pack, you have comments from the Main Street Advisory Board relative to some concerns or uh, points that they would like to have council consider as part of the application process. Uh, so far, we've only had two applications, uh, both of which were downtown. Uh, the current one, which the Main Street Advisory Board just heard, will proceed. Uh, because it would pre it predates uh, any action that you may take. I think the points that are made by the Main Street Advisory Board are very valid and I recommend to you to approve the resolution for 120 days for murals. Now this will be citywide, not just in the downtown district. And Mr. Gilmore, as I understand that, this is just trying to get our processes cleaned up 
So we have a very clear process on how you move forward with your request going forward. Correct. Council members, any questions relative to this moratorium? Uh, yes, sir. Um, I wanted to just wanted to say that my concerns are that um, we come up with an ordinance that has such clarity and such detail that uh, reviewers can reach an objective decision about the artwork that is proposed. Uh, art is exceedingly subjective. When my husband and I go to the High Museum, he's on one side of the room, I'm on the other. But to avoid uh, confusion and to avoid what could be perceived as unequal responses by the city, uh, the guidelines must be concise and concrete. I think that we need to perhaps reevaluate or make a good decision about who makes the final decision on whether or not this large piece of art is suddenly going to be in the face of every person who lives in Paris. This is a huge decision and we must wisely stipulate who makes it, especially in the downtown district. Uh, whoever decides this must be thoroughly trained as to the intent and the content of the ordinance. Uh, this is our opportunity to put in place a mechanism that will allow uh, random individuals from our city to make an objective decision. There may be murals that personally I would look at and say, I don't want, I like that, but does it meet the criteria in the concrete and concise ordinance that our city has put out. That is what we need to achieve and I am wholeheartedly in favor of the moratorium to accomplish this task. Very well stated. That is where we're trying to get to so we can make well-informed decisions with a group that will represent the city. So thank you for your comments. Any other comments? Yes, sir. At this time, I will entertain a motion that we place a moratorium on murals for 120 days as outlined by Mr. Gilmore and allow the staff to come back to this body with a recommendation of how we go forward in the future. Didn't you say 120 days? Huh. 120. 110. I'm sorry, 120 days, I'm sorry. Is there a motion? So moved. There's a motion by Mr. Jones. Is there a second? Second. Second, second. by Mr. Hunt and Ms. Peterson. Roll call. Ms. Bynum Grace? Yes. Thank you. Ms. Bynum Grace is yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Ms. Peterson is yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Jones is yes. Mr. Hunt? Yes. Mr. Hunt, yes. Mr. Albritton? Yes. Thank you very much. Please let the record show that the moratorium was approved unanimously. Number item nine on our agenda is council member items. Council member Bynum Grace. I have none. Council member Peterson. I have none. Council member Jones. No, sir. Council member Hunt. Yes, I have one, I hope maybe can be answered. On 3rd Street, there's a vent of a drain right by what used to be the Walker home. That thing is that deep. Can we put a grill over that? I don't know, have Mr. Gilmore have the uh, street? Uh, I think it's 3rd Street, isn't it? I'm not street. sure, we'll get it. Go check and see, Mr. It's right near, um, Swift. Okay. As you turn off a of Swift onto third, it's right there on the left. Okay. If you were to hit that thing, it's going to knock your car out of line or burst a tire or something. It's over near the edge, but it, every time they resurface that road, it just gets deeper and deeper. 
Yes, sir. It's a danger. We shall have it corrected for you. Anything else, Mr. Knight? No, sir. Thank you. Council Member Albert, anything this evening? No, sir. Thank you very much. Mr. Gilmore, anything for No, us? sir. Mr. Smith, anything for Mr. Mayor? Us? Yes. Mr. Mayor? Yes. I apologize for not thinking of this when you called on me, but I recently spoke with a resident in Grand Reserve who was very grateful for the rebar that had been added into the um, children's playground uh, to make that um, water receptacle much safer and not <laughs> it does not have child access any longer. But they are very grateful. Well, thank you. We're glad we improved that situation. Uh, Mr. Smith, anything this evening? No, sir, Mayor, not tonight. Miss Newby, anything for us, given all that's been going on in our world over the last couple of weeks? No, sir, nothing tonight on it. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Wood, anything? Nothing further tonight, sir. Ms. Warren, anything? Yes, sir. Thank you. Is there any, any, Ms. Clark, anything? Ms. Clark's got a new video she might want to tell you about. Um, yes. The buzzer. Yes, we just concluded um, a video which features Bob the Buzzard and the police department with a couple of officers. Um, and it's alternative. Uh, songs besides happy birthday to sing while you're washing your hands for 20 seconds so that will debut shortly and we're very excited about it we think it'll put a smile on a lot of people's faces super thank you for doing that mr wood yes mayor i do have one thing um it's despite all of the uh you know issues with uh, coronavirus it is still uh, census time and um, if you can get out that uh, information that I sent to all of you and try to get our, our counts up and make sure people are uh, responding to the census, that would be appreciated. Thank you. And I would encourage everybody to fill out their census forms and send them back. It's very, very important that we do that here in Houston County. Is there any other department heads on the phone with us at this point in time? Hearing none. Item 11 is general public items. Ms. Clark, do we have anything that's come in on the feed that we need to answer? Yes, sir. There's nothing from the general public. Thank you very much. Item 12 is mayor items. The first thing I'd like to do is wish Ms. Bynum Grace a very happy birthday. Today is Ms. Bynum Grace's birthday on April the 7th. And, uh, we had planned a big birthday party here, but needless to say, the coronavirus has interrupted us having cake and coffee together. So, Miss Fine and Grace, happy birthday to you. We appreciate that. Thank you, Mary. Happy birthday, Thank you. I feel great for a girl of 21. I know. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, another item I'd like to remind everybody is that we are under an executive order by the governor for shelter at home. It's effective as of now through April the 13th, 2020. I really strongly encourage everyone to follow the executive order and follow the guidelines that have been outlined in that executive order. You know, you're only to travel where it's essential. We'd encourage to wash your hands as we talked about with our video from Bob the Buzzard. And always practice social distancing. Remain, keep your six feet from each, each other as you're together. And also I remind you that no more than 10 people can be at a single location at any one time. And we're encouraging them if they're there to separate themselves at least by six feet. You can see tonight our council is made up of seven people. Most of our council members are at home on the phone, and that is us trying to abide by all of the guidelines that have been outlined by the governor. So in simple terms, 
just stay home if it's not essential and let's kill this virus. If there's nothing else to come before us this evening, we will stand adjourned. Thank you for your interest and participation. And again, I apologize for how we have to conduct these meetings, but we want everybody to stay.